My long-term grail watch is still the Romain Gautier Insight Micro Rotor. I was fortunate enough to see this masterpiece of design and horology created in a factory in Switzerland. I'm still a long way off saving up, so in the meantime I want to investigate more options and share these discoveries with you in a series of mini reviews exploring the extensive watch box inventory. No matter if we can afford these watches or not, let's have some fun and learn about the haute horology pieces of watch enthusiasts' wildest dreams. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, another mini review of some Hort Horology watches as I search for my next Grail watch. Now, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. This is the JLC Reverso. Uh, I just reviewed this for Watchbox. I'm not actually gonna post that video on this channel because I plan to return to JLC next year with some uh, slightly more in-depth videos because obviously JLC, my family's been wearing it for generations. I have one of their Atmos clocks uh, and also their innovative watchmaking history is just so important, so I will return to JLC. But it has been nice experiencing this um, night and day moon phase watch, absolutely gorgeous. Now, the watch we're taking a look at today, um, I also reviewed for them, I returned it, uh, I had a really great time experiencing it, and I, I didn't intend to um, do a video on this for my channel either. However, there's just so many amazing things that Patek got right with this watch. I do feel it's worth discussing, even though personally, you'll see why in just a moment, it's not a grail possibility. So without further ado, let's change perspectives and have a closer look. The Patek 5960 has become known as the perfect everyday Patek due to its practicality in its design and handy complications. This is a bold statement, especially when we're talking about a watch in solid 18 karat rose gold. This really depends on what everyday means for you. The style is undoubtedly dressy, but the feel is somehow sporty. How is this achieved? What dictates this watch's design is the many useful complications and how Patek has cleverly laid out a lot of information to the wearer in a clear, practical and elegant manner. This is not just an annual calendar, it has a 12 hour flyback chronograph, a power reserve to show its 45 to 55 hour capacity and even a day night indicator. They have ingeniously used an oversized subdial that spans the lower half of the main dial and is easy to interpret using a set of contrasting white hands for the outer 60 minute and the inner 12 hours. Naturally, this placement is important as most likely you'll be timing and reading the minutes before the hours. The day, date and month are then placed in windows opposite this, counterbalancing it, leaving the main dial relatively uncluttered. This layout is crucial to its effective design. It separates the chronograph's functions from that of the calendar, so there is never any confusion that you would get with, let's say, the complexity of a tri-compax layout, for example. It also has the aesthetic benefit of containing any busyness from the rest of the main dial, allowing more space to easily read the main hands. Being an annual calendar, it only needs adjustment once a year, and the micro pushes are discreetly placed at the side. Lastly, we should also address the size at 40.5 millimeters in diameter and with a 49 lug to lug measurement, the size is unquestionably modern, but without overcompensating. For me, one of the most compelling attributes of this watch is how its functions have been stylishly presented. The style is undoubtedly art deco inspired in my opinion, but not overbearingly so. 
Art Deco is a style of the 1920s and 30s that strived to be modern, yet deeply based in the neoclassicism that varied in influences dramatically. Art Deco represented luxury, glamour, exuberance, and a faith in social and technological progress. It sounds about right, and Patek is no stranger in the incorporation of this aesthetic. Just look at their famous sector dials for some pieces more directly inspired by that elegant age. Art Deco has always been a favourite of mine. As many of you know, I collect antiques, and so the watch speaks to me perhaps a little more than other offerings from the brand. The inverse echinus curved bezel reminds me of the shapes you would see in architecture at the base of a building's column. There is a strong line of symmetry that is accentuated by the central window at 12 being intricately faceted compared to those on either side. The circle within a circle of the exaggerated subdial is proportionate, and then the onyx black dial itself, coupled with the completely high polished rich rose gold, which gives a sense of the luxurious that early Art Deco was all about. There's also some nice circular guilloche pans for that subdial to further differentiate the surface framed by engraved gilt circles. Art Deco for the most part, until the evolution into the later streamlined modernism, was always obsessively strongly symmetrical and with bold geometric shapes. While traditionally dressy, there is an element of sportiness here. This is achieved by the subtle inclusion of a very precise seconds and minute track on the periphery of the dial. The piston head pushes give a slight feeling of the racing chronograph, and there is even small luminescent dots next to the pointed applied hour markers and on the main leaf style hands. While the loom is not amazing, it is there and seldom seen on true dress watches. It's worthy to note in other variants of this watch, the use of red hands on the subdial and white scales really emphasize this sportiness. Its mix of style makes it unexpectedly more versatile sartorially. While not on the same level of a day date or a true sports watch like a Submariner, however, I feel you could easily wear it casually with jeans and a nice polo every day, just as easily as when you are suited and booted for more formal occasions. When it comes to high-end watchmaking, Patek needs no introduction. One of the oldest Swiss watch manufacturers in the world with an uninterrupted watchmaking history since its founding. But the 5960R is historic for several reasons. Firstly, let's not forget, Patek introduced the world's first mechanical annual calendar watch in 1996. Secondly, displayed under the sapphire glass case back, the watch is powered by the calibre CH28 520IRMQA24H. Bit of a mouthful, but it is Patek Philippe's first in house manufactured automatic chronograph, originally launched in 2006. As you would expect, it is beautifully decorated with your typical horologie techniques you'd come to expect pelage work, hand beveling, circular coat de Genève stripes, black polishing, and so on and so forth. Accuracy wise, it only has a few seconds of deviation and the ability to manually wind as well. It features a highly robust Spiromax balance spring and a Gyromax free sprung balance, a unidirectional central rotor crafted in solid 21 karat yellow gold and has a total of 456 components, making it exquisitely complex. I think something here that is very important, aside from the legendary craftsmanship you get, the thought of owning a historic movement of this level and complexity from this particular brand is something very special indeed. Lastly, while we are on the subject of heritage, we should not neglect to mention the Calatrava Knight's Cross on the deployant buckle. In keeping with the brand's tradition, it's intended to bring the wearer good fortune and is always a nice touch. In order to make all these complications possible in the chronograph movement, Patek built an annual calendar module on top. Coupled with the unidirectional rotor, this does not make it the thinnest movement in the world. 
Added to the rather statuesque profile is the pronounced domed sapphire. While it's totally fine aesthetically, and in keeping with the sporty, dressy hybrid feel, the 13.3mm height does make it a little tall for my liking. In terms of how it wears, it has a reassuring heft with a weight of 119 grams. I have to say, it was very comfortable thanks to the downward pointed lugs. However, this is definitely something more for the larger or medium wrist. I can't help but wonder if the rotor was sacrificed and it was turned into a manual wind, the under the cuff elegance would be increased dramatically. But of course, the prestige of it being Patek's first in house automatic chronograph would be also lost. And talking of sportiness, even at an increased water resistance of, let's say, 50 meters over its current 30 meters, would of course be very, very welcome. Another minor annoyance is the 21 millimeter lug width. While I understand it's a design decision to maintain the harmonious proportions, lug widths in this size for the owner of the watch, with something like this, where it would be fun to change out the straps, it's just a pain finding good ones in odd sizes. One major complaint common among higher end calibers, and I think I've seen this rather too often in Hort horology options, is the lack of hacking. But thankfully, this is not so detrimental here because it is a vertical clutch column wheel chronograph. This allows you to run the seconds almost continuously with minimal wear on the components. Plus being a flyback, it makes it possible to synchronize it perfectly to a reference time. Naturally, this type of chronograph is smooth as butter in actuation, making its precision extremely effective. In conclusion, this watch has it all, a heritage and a bankability that is the envy of the watch world. A flawless combination of styles in a functional, easy to understand design that is not just straightforward, but masterfully classic and bewitching to look at too. Inside you have the horological might to back it all up that delivers a host of useful complications that at the end of the day, I totally see why it's called the everyday Patek. The 5960R is not just another conservative dress watch from Patek, it's a bit more fun. Without being brash or flashy, it has a bold presence that has a certain panache. It begs to be worn while zooming about in a 1930s roadster just as much as for dapper formal evening attire. So I'm gonna leave it there guys, but before I go, a few last points um, to, to note. The value now on the used market in 2019 at the time of posting this video, the price is about between 50 and 60, what depends obviously on, on the condition and all the rest of it. But that rough ballpark figure, now for a little bit more, I could get my micro rotor brand new and, and that watch still speaks to me more because obviously I saw, I saw it being produced by the independent uh, watchmaker, Roman Gauthier himself. And that really resonated with me deeply. That's still my, my first choice. However, I have to say, I do love this Patek. And in a, in a way, I'm, I'm kind of thankful that it's a bit too big for me because otherwise I'd be in a lot of trouble. Do nominate your suggestions for any watches you wish me to take a look at further uh, from the Watchbox website. Uh, yeah, just share down in the comments, please, your nominations. Also, do share what you think. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.